I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. It's 2017. I'm back with a repeat guest. Thank you so much for coming along. Corey Lathan, she's the CEO of Anthrotronics and you're also the co-chair of the Human Enhancement Global Futures Council. Now what is that? I'm picturing <laughs> cyborgs. Right. Well, many of us on the council picture that as well. It's, right. it's actually a fantastic group of people. Um, we have bioethicists. We have um, biotech folks who are doing gene therapy. We have uh, people with disabilities. Um, we have those who are working on aging and longevity. So it's a really exciting council, and it's really focused around this idea that the fourth industrial revolution w um, it implies the convergence of incredible technology that will have such an impact on our lives, like AI and robotics, um, among others. And many of these technologies will really enhance our functional abilities, mm -hmm. and that's what we call human enhancement. When we use these technologies to improve lives of individuals and their communities, to improve their quality of life, as well as potentially longevity. So it's, it's a really exciting council with a broad mission and to really look at the impact of these technologies on human, human function. So tell me about some of your work, and in particular, the human enhancement within health. Mm -hmm, and some mm -hmm, of the work you've been mm -hmm. doing on cognitive function on the brain. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, I, I've been on this mission to really bring brain health to the masses, this mm -hmm. idea that we measure all of our other vital signs, but we don't have a vital sign for brain health. And it's just so critical, and especially as we've, ha as we've had this shift from health care to health. Mm -hmm. How do we keep people healthier longer? Um, and so my work is really to look at how do we harness all of the data that is out there, that we're generating through our wearables, that we're generating through our smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, we generate, I generate more data in a day than my doctor sees in a year. Goodness. And that's true for each, every one of us. Okay. And this data isn't, isn't alone. It's, it's in the Internet of Things. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. connected in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, how do we harness this data appropriately to improve wellness and well-being. And what would you like to see happen? What's your kind of future on this, you know, in the Global Futures Council? What's your future of how your your wearable is is talking to your smartphone is telling you something about about your brain health or something? Well, you know, there's um, there's some there's some low-hanging fruit there, mm -hmm. and and I think the low-hanging fruit are at um, particularly high-risk populations for chronic disease or other types of disease. We know that um, we've done a lot of work with informal caregivers, family members of Alzheimer's patients. Mm -hmm. And these are people that self-identify as healthy. Um, and just like you, and I, you or I might forget someone's name or forget where we put our keys, we don't, we don't think of that as anything unusual. It's just, you know, we just think we mm -hmm. just it's brush Sunheimers. it off. It's Yeah, it's, <laughs> there we go, Sumheimers. Yeah, I Sunheimers. love that. I love that. Um, but the idea is that at some point, especially with caregivers who are under chronic sleep, Chronic, chronic stress, mm -hmm. that their cognitive function decreases, they have increase in anxiety, increase in depression, things like that, and eventually that takes its toll um, emerging as chronic disease. Now I know that you did a, um, a kind of game last year mm -hmm. asking the folks here mm -hmm. at Davos to, um, to measure their brain, their cognitive function, and you were looking at exactly these same things, these issues of stress, these mm -hmm. issues of lack of sleep, but over a very short time, and what did you find? Yeah, so it was really exciting. We did the Davos Brain Challenge last year, both, um, both here in Switzerland and in China during the summer Davos. So we had hundreds of people take our five-minute brain vital, mm -hmm. um, as well as answer uh, kind of a well, uh, some questions that gave us a wellness snapshot. You know, how sleepy are they? Mm -hmm. How much sleep did they get last night? How stressed are they? You know, what mood are they in? Mm -hmm. And then we looked at that data, and what we saw well, we saw a something that we expected, and that's that cognitive function or brain function decreases with age. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact, sorry. Yep. Um, but what we also saw is that it decreased with uh, decreasing sleep, which is also fairly, no fairly normal. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens with healthy people, who mostly are the people coming to, to Davos, mm -hmm. that as the sleep fell off, as they got less sleep, their stress increased and performance came back up. So in other words, you get you know, these adrenaline, mm -hmm. you get cortisol, mm -hmm. and it actually counters the effect of, the, of 
the decreased sleep. And so your performance goes back up. Amazing. But as, as you mentioned before, it's very different when these things happen over a longer period Correct. of time. Correct. Yep, exactly. Corey, exactly. thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos and on ED Lush.